These are two examples of space shuttle kits that you can find today. Also from Ravel. However, these are from Ravel of Germany, not Ravel USA. Ravel of Germany is a sister company, totally independent of Ravel USA. They're based in Europe. Uh, however, both companies do trade molds back and forth, and both of these kits are the Ravel USA molds. On top we have the 172nd scale Space Shuttle Atlantis, and on bottom we have the Space Shuttle Discovery with booster rockets and 144th scale. The package design is very reminiscent of what Ravel of Germany has done over the years. The blue border design has been around since about oh, the late 1980s. Um, this is one of the few kits to come out with shuttle Atlantis packaging in the form of the 172 scale kit. There was actually a uh, 1144 scale shuttle Atlantis orbiter that was released in, by Ravello Germany in 1985-86. Uh, Pretty much the packaging was almost identical to the uh, Ravel USA version in, in, in that you had pictures of the kit on the box instead of really beautiful artwork. Uh, one of the things I like about these two particular kits is the decal sheets are much better than what you find in the Ravel USA offerings. And it seems like the European uh, space enthusiasts understand the shuttle a bit more than uh, the marketing guys in the US. I mean, they did a really good job on the packaging design, as you can see. And that's beautiful. If they ever offered this as a poster, I would love to hang it from my wall. Same thing goes for the 1144th offering. That's just very well done. But uh, both these kits are currently available internationally uh, in the U.S. and abroad. The Booster Rockets kit originally came out circa 2000. 8-2009 time period, whereas the 172 scale Space Shuttle Atlantis was released very late 2010. And just kind of make a nice uh, footnote as to how shuttles appreciated by mono manufacturers at the end of its career. Well, I thought I'd take a moment to showcase the uh, decal sheets showing state-of-the-art from 1983-84 and state of the art today. The sheet on the left hand side is out of the Challenger 172 scale orbiter kit from Ravel and the one on the right is the really extensive decal sheet that's offered in the Ravel of Germany 172 scale Space Shuttle Atlantis kit. The the Challenger offering was the first sheet to come out with uh, markings for all five of the original orbiters, Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, and Atlantis, and Discovery. Um, the one on the other side just has markings for Discovery, Atlantis, Endeavor, but they are in the newer style. However, the thing that the current sheet offers is all these real extensive markings. You've got these uh, black edge trim decals uh, that make painting the shuttle model just a breeze and there's stuff there I have not even seen on aftermarket decal sheets um, there's even white areas on the tail on the Elevon so all the modeler has to do is just paint those areas black and just put the decals over the top if I were doing it though I would still do the tails in white and, and mask them and edge them in, black, in, in the black just as normal just because white painted is brighter white than white decal applied over a black surface. The decal sheets in the Ravel monogram reissue of the monogram shuttle stack 
I don't know. I was hoping they would do a Ravella Germany sheet, but they did not. They they opted instead to just reissue the original artwork, and they did a really, dare I say it, piss-poor job at doing it. The colors were just crap. The reds were too dark, the blues were too dark, and the bright yellow markings were almost like zinc chromate yellow in color. Uh, so, I wish Ravel of Germany would offer this sheet by itself. And I understand if you're in Europe, you can theoretically buy one of these sheets, just order it, but that's not something that Ravel uh, Monogram offers. I tried, and they said, uh, nope, we can't do that. I'm going, why? You create the guys next door, create the most beautiful shuttle decal sheet I have ever seen, and we got to buy an 80 or $90 kit to get it? Crazy. But if you get the Ravella Germany Space Shuttle, you get a really nice decal sheet in the process. Alrighty. This is the current reissue of the Monogram Shuttle Stack, the Space Shuttle with Fuel Tank and Boosters. This came out in May of 2011. Uh, and chronologically, this is the final Space Shuttle kit issued at a time when the uh, shuttle was flying, it was still flying. As I record this, it's about hmm, a week after Atlantis landed for the last time. Now, if you notice, even though Ravel and Monogram are one company, Ravel still uses the Monogram name. Reason being is they whip that name out for uh, limited edition reissues, uh, short production runs. And it is kind of nice that they are honoring the Monogram name by giving this kit one last fling. They showcase it as a skill level 3 kit. Obviously this is not the easiest kit in the world to build. I should know, I've built two, built two of them and I have one currently being built right now. Uh, Price-wise, it is it retails for about $89, $99, but you can usually find it for around the mid-70s from retailers and even some eBay vendors. And one thing I do like about this thing coming out is it's hopefully minimized the really absurd, stupid prices you're seeing charged for the other issues of the kit, the original and the... 1999 reissue. Plastic wise it's identical. Decals in the kit are reproductions of the original sheet except they include the uh, the name Endeavor on the sheet. However these decals really suck. So if you can get aftermarket decals I would encourage you to do so. Uh, Real Space Models based in Florida is coming out with a new sheet in 172 scale uh, with all the new markings. Hopefully they'll be out before the end of the year, uh, but even older Space Shuttle markings, or even the Ravella Germany sheet, are light years ahead of uh, what this kit includes, but decals are easy to obtain, plastic is not, so it's nice to see this. But you can also see how they took the artwork from the original kit, they modified it uh, to, this is kind of the current trend in kit in a kit box production where the artwork covers the entire lid and you've only got the titles up in the corner they didn't uh, they didn't box the artwork as it were inside some smaller layout if you look close on the top panels you can see pictures of the actual kit built I'm sure you could probably do a better job than what they've been able to do, but at least it's nice to know that we have it. So this concludes the US portion of Space Shuttle model kit history from 1970s up through today. 30 years worth.